prompt design prompt design is just a fancy term for how to write good input how to write good input text to get good output from chat gpt right that is what prompt design is just a fancy term for that now there is this concept in software design uh, software development which is called gigo gigo right garbage in garbage up right so if your input is garbage what you will get out of it will also be garbage right so we need to learn how your uh, how to make your input not garbage so that you get the required output from chat gpt cool okay let's move to prompt design now let's move right into the chat gpt tool let's get into the hr prompt right away right write job description write a job description for a payroll specialist let's see this is the prompt right write a job description for a payroll specialist you get uh the job title payroll specialist you can see the job description responsibilities requirements etc right it does a good enough job right let me increase the font size a little bit so that it is yeah slightly more slightly better for you good so it does a good enough job right but can you make this better yes you can how do you make that better by using the prompt formula a uh, perfect prompt is role or identity context plus specificity output format and tone right what does that mean we will go through it one by one so what we have done here is write a job description for a payroll specialist what do you mean by first of all role or identity so any time you start giving input to chat gpt or any generative ai tool you first want to give it a personality that is what i mean by role or identity that is the first part of any prompt any input what does a personality mean well in our case if we are hr professionals we want chat gpt to act as a very experienced hr professional so what i will do is so this is what it will look like right i want you to act as a hr professional with 15 years of experience across startups mid size companies and multinational organizations right so what i'm trying to do here is just imagine if you are new to this field of hr or say you have 2 to 3 years of experience or even say 5 years of experience who do you want to go to for advice right someone who is much more experienced than you right that is the same personality that you are giving to chat gpt right and again when i say chat gpt i also mean google bard i also mean microsoft bing whatever tool you are using right so first of all give the uh, generative ai tool in this case chat gpt a personality what is the personality that we are giving the tool here we are giving it a personality of a very experienced hr professional now we are being very specific with this personality the that we are giving as well we are saying hey you have 15 years of experience you have worked at mid size companies also enterprise companies also but also fledgling startups as well you have worked at companies where you have been the only hr but you have also worked at companies where the hr team is a 50% team right and you have worked across hr functions so basically we have covered the gamut of experience that any that any hr professional experienced hr professional can have why we have why we have done this so that chat gpt now takes this personality and it gives answers based on this personality right so when i gave this prompt now chat gpt is saying as an experienced i bring a wealth of knowledge and it has understood right it basically wrote down the thing it expanded out in it a little bit now here is the beauty of something like a chat gpt right it retains context it has memory so for now i have said you know i want you to act as a hr professional even if i do 100 more conversations as long as it is in the same tab which is this context the uh, the context will only be retained in this particular conversation right not in some other conversation that you are doing with it 
even if I do 100 more conversations in this, it will still remember it is an HR professional with 15 years of experience. Right? So that is the beauty of generative AI tools like ChatGPT. They have memory. They retain context. So now that we have context retention, now that we have memory, the tool becomes that much more impactful, right? Because I don't have to tell it the same thing over and over again. It will just remember. So now that I have given it a personality, right? So we discussed the prompt formula. What is the prompt formula? The prompt formula is part one is give it a personality, right? So the perfect prompt is part one is Again, I'm typing it role or identity. So we have now given it a role and identity. Now set the context, which is essentially the ask, right? Context plus specificity is your ask. So what do you want here? Write a job description for a payroll specialist, right? This is exactly what we did last time as well. Now, if I do this prompt, it will give a slightly better answer given that the personality has changed. But now I need to set the context, make my ask much more specific, right? What kind of a payroll specialist am I looking at? The candidate should have at least five years of experience in payroll. Right? I'm being specific. I'm setting context. Uh, I'm being specific. What is setting context? The job opening is for a fintech organization based out of Mumbai. Let's say. Right? So the more specific that you get, the more context that you give, the better the results that you will get from any generative AI tool, right? What more context can I give? And this is again a sample use case. Your use case might be different or whatever. The candidate should have should have worked at a fintech fintech organization for at least two years. Again, these are all sample use cases. So as opposed to write a job description for a payroll specialist, what we have done now is we have given the, uh, the generative AI tool, in this case, chat GPT, a personality. And now we have made the ask the context much more clear, right? What kind of a company am I who is looking to hire? And the uh, ask much more specific. I'm looking for someone with five years of experience in payroll management at least two years at a fintech organization. So the result that you will get now, uh, by the way, do you see it types almost one word at a time? Obviously it's too fast because I'm on the paid version. That is exactly what I was trying to tell you, right? So if you use the free version, you will see the typing is much slower. So it threads one word at a time. So what it is doing is pattern recognition and you know one word after the other. Cool. So now you will see the uh, location has been uh, included. We are a leading fintech organization based in Mumbai, right? So you don't have to give all of this. This is already part of it, right? And obviously the uh, specific stuff is uh, also there. So you can see, for example, in the first prompt that we gave, the requirement did not include Certified payroll professional certification or similar condition can, credentials are preferred. Why has this changed? Because now ChatGPT, first of all, has a better personality, but it also now knows that we need someone with five plus years of experience. So it also knows that, knows that this certification or a similar credential may be a requirement for someone with five plus years of experience. So again, the perfect prompt is Role or identity plus context plus specificity. That forms the core inquiry. Now, what you can also do is ask for your results in a particular format and ask it to uh, use a particular tone in that out. Obviously, for a job description, you don't 
uh, I mean, there is a standard format, there is a standard tone, but say it was something like, let's look at the second prompt, right? Um, let me see quickly if I can pull up rather than typing, I can pull up. Uh, okay, let us use this. So I'm saying you're part of the HR team. An employee has been pinging on Slack about his queries. Please write an email to him asking him to mail XYS as ABCD detailing out his ask so the team can respond, right? Now you can see the concept of output format and tone here. So you can make it very, very specific. Make it short, no more than 150 words, right? You can ask the format to be, make it a bullet, make it in a bullet point format. Give me five bullet points right? Use polite and friendly tone. All of those things you can use. Now you can see uh, for this particular prompt, a request to email your query for better assistance. Obviously, we have asked for a use polite and friendly tone, right? And make it short, no more than 150 words. So it is a 150 word with polite and friendly tone. Now let's say, I'm just showing you an example of you can, how you can manipulate the output, right? So you can say, make it shorter, no more than 100 words. And this time, use a strict, strict tone, right? Now, this is the part where the context and memory, right? You are not writing the whole thing again. You are part of the HR team and employee has been pinging on Slack. You can just say, make it shorter, no more than 100 words. And this time use a strict tone. Chat GPT understands what you are asking to make it shorter, right? It's the previous response that you're asking to make shorter and use a strict tone. So you can see this was the previous response, 150 words in polite tone. Now you have shorter 100 word response in strict tone, right? So depending on what sort of a tone your organization uses, you can modify it, right? What you can also do, by the way, is for something like this, obviously, you know, uh, these are standard stuff. But if you write things in a certain manner, what you can do is you can feed that into the personality of ChatGPT or whatever generative AI tool you are using. So what you can do is you can uh, copy paste 10 of your emails that you have written in the past, feed it to this chat GPT, learn this writing style. This is my writing style. I want you to learn the writing style and uh, the tone of my writing. And then whatever prompt you give it next, it will start writing in your writing style and tone. So if you use a few particular words over and over again, and obviously the more number of uh, copy paste of your content that you give to chat GPT, the better it will get at replicating, replicating you, right? Okay. Uh, let's say one of the challenges that we see is, uh, you know, obviously English not being our first language. Many people face challenges with English, right? So you can make... Uh, chat GPT, your English proofreader, your grammar corrector, whatever, right? So I want you to act as a proofreader and writer. I'll provide you with an extract, proofread for grammatical errors and ensure it is written clearly. Phrases that can be written more clearly should be done. So write the extract with the relevant changes and share a list of improvements made. Now, because I'm lazy, I will also ask chat GPT to write a badly written, give me a badly written paragraph of English, English with horrible grammar, 200 words, right? Just for the sample, I want a sample to showcase. Um, so yeah, so chat GPT has given me a badly written paragraph of English. Now let's go back to the prompt. Uh, this one that we are using here. Huh. So I, in this case, I am act, asking chat GPT to act as a proofreader, right? So I will take this badly written paragraph, right? And I will give it to, so it says, you know, I am giving, I want you to act as a proofreader. So that is the personality that I'm giving. I'm asking it to correct the paragraph, but also give me the list of improvements made so I can learn. So I am now giving it the 
badly written paragraph, which I also generated using chat GPT, but just a sample piece, right? So I gave it the badly written paragraph. Now it will improve this. So you can see the badly written paragraph is me and my friends. We goes to the park and there was lots of people there, right? So it's very badly written English. Now you can see it has improved it, right? My friends and I went to the park yesterday and there were many people there, great time playing ball. The good part of this is it says it gives you the improvements made as well, right? So you can learn. So just a, just a simple use case to show the power of uh, something like this, right? Cool. Um, let's look at the next one here. You know, something like this is useful. This is pretty much, you know, this is one use case, right? Just imagine you can ask chat GPT to be whatever you want it to be. So, and many people say this, this is not something that I have come up with or I have discovered that, uh, right? The best way to think of chat GPT is to think of it as a genius intern that you have, right? Who you don't have to manage because it's a AI, right? So this genius intern will help you get better at your job, will do your admin tasks for you. It will do your menial tasks for you and it will never complain. And it is always available 24 seven. Well, at least if you are on the paid plan, because the free plan might not work all the time, but obviously you can use Microsoft Bing or Google Bard as well. Right? So the best way to think about it is think of it as a genius intern, which is available for you 24 seven that will do whatever your, your bidding, right? Whatever wish you have, it will fulfill. Right? Okay. Now you have understood the prompt. Is the prompt part very clear? Is the formula for prompt very very clear thanks jasmeet for posting it again role identity plus context plus specificity plus output format and tone right if you take care of that most of your problems will be solved 